This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. In the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new. Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. At Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Good day, and welcome to another, yet another episode of Vast Wasteland, the video journal of pop culture. I'm Wilbert Neal. <laughs> I'm Marty Wiley. <laughs> and she's cracking up. <laughs> and we're going to, this is another um, of the potpourri ones. And, um, well, before we um, start talking about that, let me tell you about um, when we're supposed to be on here. Can when okay? When we're usually on here, like um, most of the time we're on here at least. Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3, and maybe Saturday afternoon, just maybe, about 4.30 or so. We haven't confirmed that, but yet, that's what we hear. And then, um, if you want to write us and ask us about things, and Or if I'm, you want to just write us and bitch about something. <laughs> well, people do that, too. <laughs> you can write us at Box 151411, Columbus, Ohio. Four, three, no, excuse me. Four, three, two, one, <laughs> one five. five. That's Blast it. Off. <laughs> and that's that's that that's there. I didn't do so okay. <clears throat> so now um, we were going to be talking about the um, idea that Paul McCartney was in another band before he was in Wings, but um, I I got an important call telling me that we promised to do, or I had promised to do. Another thing on Columbus the way it used to be because I didn't finish last time. I, I only got started. So <laughs> we're going to continue with that. It's the ranting and raving hour again. <laughs> and I'll and be he does not drink. <laughs> talking about how Columbus used to be, or as I remember it, which may or may not be how it actually was because, Robert. you know, memories are subjective. 
Perhaps Columbus is only a figment of your imagination. Well, it seems that way now because it certainly isn't the way it used to be as far as things were. And so I'll just <laughs> jump in there. It's like um, I was talking about most, most of the things I talked about last time were downtown, although I did kind of get around to the, the shopping centers, the big ones at least, the big, the big three. It was like um, mo I stayed mostly downtown. But um, going back downtown there, there were still some things that I did not talk about. Um, let me see. I, I know I mentioned Woolworths downtown, the idea that they... Uh, it's still there. Well, it is still there, true, but they used to have a... Um, a big food counter right up front there and it was this big Elsie the cow head that used to be back there. It was like a big rubber Ew, No, Elsie wait a minute, thing. wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Let me get this straight. The big entertainment in Columbus was to go down to Woolworths, look in the front window, look at Elsie the cow and watch people eat. No, no, that I'm not sounds like Columbus. <laughs> food here. There was there was food there. They used to have like pizza and stuff there and they would have it right there in the but now it's kind of moved over to the side there. They still have it. I, they still do have it. And they had like a diner, little diner kind of counter there. And it's right over to the side there. And that's actually still there. So, but it's like the yeah, inside of Woolworths has just kind of changed a little. Anyway, downtown on Spring Street, right there, about spring and high, there was this trailer. And in that trailer, you could get the best conies some of the best conies in the city, and I'm not sure whether it was either one of the two. It was probably one of the two. Um, trailer big cony, cony um, trailer Bob Coney. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's there's like there's like George's and there's Phillips. It was one of those two, but I'm not sure which one Coney's was actually there the in that trailer. But then they took out that trailer and they put in a they put in a Lums, mm. <laughs> a Lums right there on that corner, and Lums was around for quite a while, and then it became a um, Lums went out, and then it's like an Oriental restaurant now, and I, I just don't know if people feel safe going there. Anyway, <laughs> several things have happened there. Yeah. There was um, across the street and down a bit, well, south of there, was the clock restaurant, which may still be there, but they yeah. used to have this great big clock out front, and it was really There's great. There's a clock down on High Street. Well, but it was a big clock with a face on it. And it had like All a, a spoon for one arm and a and a fork for the other. It was a big cartoon face on his clock. And it was it was cool. I'm sure you're could, not confusing with like Lucy's toy shop. No, no, no. This was a big. You sure you were hallucinating? And I'm not thinking about grandfather clock on Captain Kangaroo either. But it was it was this big clock that used to sit out in front of the clock restaurant. I mean, there is an actual How clock big was there, but head? there was. It was twice as big. That <laughs> clock said it was twice as big. But um, that used to be down there. And then um, let's see. If you go further down High Street, south on High Street, um, and you turn on Town Street there, which you can't do anymore because then you'll be running smack into the city center. But um, anyway, there used to be um, a great old bookstore right there, and from that old bookstore grew the Wizard of Comics because they, they were in there and then they, they moved out of there in about, oh, the middle, later 70s. They moved out of there and they moved north on High Street to where um, an old, old um, dime store used to be. And then they were there for a while, but then they moved further up High Street, up north of the, um, the Drexel North. Well, it wasn't the Drexel North then, but well, yes, it was. It was the Drexel North by then. And they were there for a while, and then they moved over on Indianola and spread out to all their other places, but then they just kind of fizzled out, so they're no longer around anymore either. And that's, that's another thing. And then, let's see, if you're, you were downtown there, you're on Town Street, there used to be a, a Chinese restaurant right there, um, Hotoy, I believe it was. Still and it was there. It was there, but it, it was, you know, well, it, it was... No, it's not on Town Street anymore because that's not there anymore. Well, who remembers the names of the streets? And, but then they built over on... Um, the street that goes this way and the street that goes that State way. Over on State Street, they put in a, uh, a, um, a Burger King. And the Burger King went out, and that's where Hotoy moved to, and Hotoy's still there now. Anyway, um, really? there was this... Um, okay, and I mentioned Burger King there. Let's, let's go back, way back, back, back into, into time. time. When in Columbus yeah. there were only two kinds of I hamburgers. I thought you were going to say troglodytes and that one's <laughs> the mayor. No, 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 now stop that. <laughs> there, was, there was really only one hamburger chain, I guess you could call it really, 
back then it was White Castle. <laughs> and oh, they used to White be Castle. they used to have several locations around town. In fact, I think one of the first, if not the, the first, first one, one was on Fifth. And yeah. now it's at the zoo. Well, they, they moved that when they moved the whole building out from where it was at the corner of Fifth and Fifth, Fifth and, and something. No, Fifth and uh, Cleveland. And they moved it and that building is now on the fairground. I mean not the fairground, no, the, zoo the zoo grounds. Ground. The zoo grounds. Because that was still there the when zoo. I moved up here. And they had one on that castle. North High, North Arcadia, which they just kind of redid and modernized. There was one over on um, 4th Street, just just um, just south of Long Street. And they used to be kind of like along the side of a building. And it was right there. There was one on um, Main that was kind of along the side of a building, over by where the police station is now. But you know what? And those just kind of all went. And then... They said, well, now there should be other hamburger places. So in the early 60s, um, Sandy's was created. Sandy's was, the hamburgers were 15 cents. And they had this uh, little Scottish girl in a kilt and a tam. And she was had one leg up she doing, was doing a little the, doing the jig, uh, Scottish the jig dancing. thing there. And that was Sandy's restaurant. And that was actually before... McDonald's became real popular in Columbus. There was a McDonald's in Columbus, but actually it was in Whitehall, and it was an old one. It was in it was on Hamilton Road, just south of Broad Street, and this one was so old it had the old. It was a hamburger-headed guy. <laughs> oh, hamburger-headed chef guy. And he had a little sign there, and on the thing he would be walking, and there were neon. I remember those Lights arches. on the on the arches. Yeah. And he was up there, and there was, I think their hamburgers were like 15 cents at that time, too. Wait a minute. There was one place, I don't know if you mentioned it before, but the name cracks me up. Um, um, Big Boy Burger World or something. Well, hold on now. I'll get to that. Oh, I'll, excuse I'll get to me. That. Over, on, over on Livingston, like there was a... Like a burger and a burger, huh? <laughs> no, no. On Livingston, they had the, uh, what was called the, the Big Boy Mainliner. And it was, um, <coughs> excuse me, ooh, I know that was fun. It was one of the, um, one of the old burger places you. that had, where you could drive up and they'd come over, the girls would skate over and put the tray on your window and, and do all that. And that was a place where you could get hamburgers too. And of course, then you had your, your big boys, which were Elby's here, Elby's big boys and all. They had the burgers and everything. But then um, down from there at Alum Creek and Livingston, they put in the BBF. Burger Boy Foodorama with the whirling satellite. Don't that just sound like a place you could graze all day? <laughs> like you go in for breakfast bar and and you stay through dinner. <laughs> well, actually, they just had um, burgers and fries and like, uh, well, like soft drinks. You just put a trough in front of you and were, um, you every hour. Were basically their their main thing at that time and. Um, Mr. Happy, the clown. <laughs> he had this polka dot. Well, this um. Well, Flippo had a blue suit. Mr. Happy had a white suit with colorful um, pom 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 poms on it, and a no, little it wasn't even little here. bowler derby hat. And he kind of looked like a big bag of Wonder Bread. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the idea. But anyway, it, it just kind of looked like that now that I think about it. But he um, he was the spokes clown for Burger Boy or well, BBF. You have a clown for, for burgers. I, I don't know. Clowns I and kings, you know. I haven't figured that out. But like a yet, prevailing theme there in he the was, burger world. Their big thing, in, well, McDonald's had the golden arches. BBF had the whirling satellite, which is this, it was, you, it was a real 60s thing because satellite, space things, you know, ooh, <laughs> it was this satellite. It had these um things sticking out of them. They were supposed to be like antennas, but there were several of them, and they were all different colors, too, and it would, it had a, it would turn on its axis, so half of it was going one way, half of it was going the other way, and then the whole thing would, like, spin around, so it was like a... Um, so you could, like, watch it and get sick while you ate. Almost, but it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't really spinning fast, it was spinning slowly, you'd get bored, really. <laughs> you'd watch it, and then your food would be ready, so it was, it was, it was that idea, and then they, um, there were, there were several... BBFs around town, and then McDonald's got to be popular. So there were several McDonald's around town. They went into competition against each other. It's like, well, McDonald's had their their hamburgers and their fries, and and the the 
Back then, She's you learning. could not drink a milk. I don't know if the milkshakes have gotten runnier since then or what, but it's like you could not drink a milkshake. Without, like, sucking your uvula <laughs> out or sucking something. Sucking your cheeks all the way into each other and stuff. That was... But anyway, they had those good... I always thought, like, White Castle had the best. Well, they... Well, McDonald's... But uh, see, I had to drive. I thought, well, I couldn't drive because I was like a little kid. But since I lived in... Lebanon, we had to go to Cincinnati for White Castle. We had no White To this day, Lebanon does not have a White Castle. It's such a culturally deprived place. But to some people, that could be a good <laughs> thing that, that there is no White Castle close by. Well, they got everything else. <laughs> but White Castle used to always have, um, their, their, their um, main attraction for me was their orange drink. Because nobody else had that orange drink. You'd go to you'd go to McDonald's or, or BBF and want to get that. It's never the same as the orange drink they had at White Castle. That was just that special orange drink. They always had that special flavor for their hamburgers too. It was it was it, <laughs> it was, was just, called leftover. <laughs> well, it, it was it was different. It was it was it was neat. But White Castle, <clears throat> yeah. You know, no matter where you go, White Castles taste the same. They do. Like big old steamed up onions. It's it's kind of a scary thing, but yet it's true. I don't really. <laughs> I used and to wonder, was it meat on there? <laughs> well, several people still do, or exactly what type of meat it is, but, well, but that's, that's not necessarily the issue here. But they're, um, they went through a whole thing, too, with McDonald's and all those about having 100% beef hamburgers after a while. It's like somebody complained or something that they didn't think it was all 100% beef, and so they had it to warm. come up with their 100% beef hamburger thing and just make a big deal out of that. And that was when they still had the, uh, the paper the paper wrapper and uh -huh. well Sandy's had the paper wrapper BBF yeah. had the paper wrapper everybody had the paper wrapper everybody's gone back to the paper wrapper. they've gone back to the paper wrapper now Except after White going Castle through their little boxes well true White Castle did always have the boxes and they still do in the best shape they were they were um sticklers for that and that was kind of their thing because their little picture of the the castle was on the box and that was that was their thing to do so they they it stuck with is. it and they never changed where McDonald's and everybody else has gone through their styrofoam phase craze and they've gone away from that. But before they did the styrofoam thing, they had um McDonald's had a roast beef sandwich that was in a it was in like a cardboard box, which I guess they let me see. Do they do anything in a cardboard box now? I don't think I don't they know. Do. I haven't worked there for like <clears throat> eons. But they um they had these great roast beef sandwiches in this cardboard box and they had a little packet of barbecue sauce, which was some of the best barbecue sauce that any fast food place had, but at that same time, they were going into competition against Arby's, who had their roast beef sandwiches, and, wait a minute, no, what was it? It was Jack's. Jack's, yeah. Jack's roast beef <laughs> Jack's that, that went to Rick's, that went to, I know they went through so many name changes down in, in Middletown. Yeah, it was, it was Jack's, then it was Rick's, Rick's and, and now it's Rack's, which it is now, but um, at that time it was... Here? No, there was Ooh, no Red Barn Red here. Red Barn there in was Cincinnati. Red Barn in Cleveland? <laughs> there Red was a... Barn had best hot dogs. You couldn't get hot dogs anywhere else. Chicken. Chicken? Well, I like the hot dogs. It is like you couldn't get hot dogs anyplace else in the entire world when you were out shopping down in Cincinnati or whatever, except the Red Barn. I and they toasted the buns, Red Barn. And you didn't have Red Barn We did here? not have Red Barn See, here, but they had a Red Barn in Athens. They had one in Middletown, didn't they? Didn't they have one in Middletown? No, I don't think there was one in Middletown. Okay, then I must be thinking about the one in Athens, because I can remember going through there. No, there was one in Middletown. Was there? If it wasn't Middletown, it was someplace else. Well, we always went to Cincinnati for Red Barn. I think, it was, I think they had one in Middletown. I'm almost sure they did. Anyway, but they had one in Athens, too, but not around here. Not around Columbus. No, we were stuck with, oh, McDonald's and BBF. And see, BBF. Um, okay, McDonald's had their, their roast beef sandwich, and then everybody else, the roast beef places opened up with, oh, Arby's and their Jamocha shakes and, and oh. Jack's that they just had the roast yeah, beef Burger sandwich. Yeah, Burger Chef, excuse me. How you well, yeah, them? yeah, we had Burger Chef, too, because Burger Chef opened up after... Burger, Burger King got yeah. going here because Burger Kings weren't here either. But then after McDonald's and everything was doing well, they put in Burger King, and then there was Burger Chef, and they just had all these burger places. And then um, Burger Chef with the amazing mushroom burger. McDonald's decided, I guess, that they could not do the roast beef sandwich well anymore, so they stopped that. <laughs> like they have strived to do it well. Okay. They stopped that, and they I did. It was fast. They started doing the um, the Big Mac. And then they did the quarter pounder. Hey, that's like the 800th anniversary of Big Mac. Well, let's see, the 20, 25th or 20th. 
Okay, the 20th anniversary. Oh, that's just the shelf life of a Big Mac. Shows how long it's been since they did their roast beef sandwich. And I think the roast beef sandwich was probably one of their best sandwiches. I mean, since then they did what, uh, the chopped beef steak, which was like, what, old military surplus <laughs> thing. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> and they've done several things. I mean, they that's came what, out. That's what no place has. A spam restaurant. Well, a now. Spam burger restaurant. Would you really want to go to a spam burger restaurant? <laughs> there are people restaurant? that would. Spam in the Nobody place where you a live. Turkey burger either. Now, um, the ground turkey is very good. That's true. Why nobody has, has nobody a opened burger, up a ground right? turkey burger restaurant? Um, I guess it would just be too darn easy. Mm. They'd rather have sliced turkey and things like that, which Rax is taking off. With Rax and Arby's are kind of doing yeah, competing I don't with know. those now. And um, Still let's have see. Casanos? Um, we did uh, not have Casanos until later. Ah, uh, but y'all didn't have La Rosa's, did you? No, no, no. La Rosa's came out of Cincinnati. That's where you got the best sandwiches for uh, Italian sandwiches, the best hoagies, what you call them up here? Well, submarine sandwiches. Whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, then, um, well. I'm getting bored with the burgers. <laughs> no, Burger Boy Foodorama, they, uh. Burger Boy Foodorama. I mean, they did onion rings, things like that, and then they got bought out by um, a local company, Borden's. So they became Borden Burger. <laughs> <laughs> and they got rid of the satellite. They got rid of Mr. Happy. Elsie. <laughs> and Elsie, don't go on a date with Elsie. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was, that was like a big thing there. And they, they were the ones that would buy all the, they would go to the fair and buy the cows and things, you know. Elsie would be messing around on Elmer. She can get rid of the evidence. <laughs> and it was, I guess it was right around that time that, um, that Wendy started up, too. When, um, well, it was just before Borden, Borden brought out BBF. But after they did, it was like they had conies there, and you could get Cracker Jacks there, and just all kinds of things phased, phased in, and then it just kind of phased out altogether. <laughs> so by the late, the end of the 70s, there was no more Bert Borden Burger. It was just gone. It was all gone. It was out of there. And um, That's about as funny when you find out what Elmer's glue is made out of. <laughs> Or you start questioning what it's made out of. <laughs> and you wonder how much of that stuff you stuck in your mouth. <laughs> but, well, there we are. So, um, or it's like I, I, I informed my daughter the other day what's in Jell-O. <laughs> well, we don't have to buy Jell-O no more. <laughs> yeah, she certainly won't eat it if we do. But um, let's see. So that, that's, a, those, that's another restaurant that just kind of phased out of there. Well, Lums. Lums lasted for a while, but then Lums phased out. That was yeah, about Lums. when Max and, Irma, great. Max and Irma came in, so Max and Irma's still going strong, but um, let's see. There was, um... What's that for pizza? Well, there, <laughs> there was, what, Tommy's? You didn't have Casano's. You didn't have La Rosa. There were no... You did big... have Italianettes, but then Lebanon was the only place in the world that had Italianettes. There were no big pizza chain pizza places. I mean, Tommy's was about the closest that Columbus came to having more than one place with the same name on it that served pizza. Huh. And um, none of them were, you, know, you weren't able to eat inside any of them either until later on when they built the one over on uh, Lane Avenue. Squally? No, no. There was no eat inside pizza place. There just wasn't. Oh, until um, somewhere in the early 70s, they brought in this, this pizza hut thing. No, wait a minute. Back up. Hold the phone. There was Back one. Up. Wait. There was one. Shakey's. 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 With the banjo. Shakey's old time pizza with parlor. The piano. They had the piano, which, which we never really went there until after the ghost of Mr. Chicken was real popular, and we'd ah. go there and we'd see the piano player. Whoa! It's a ghostly piano, but it was cool though. Again, then they painted the they painted the keys all with the uh, the Did they fluorescent do a paint. The light, a, a black light when turned I the light there? and there was fluorescent thing. There was the black light. It was cool. And they showed movies, old battle movies cartoons and, and stuff. And it had the banjo guys playing, and they, that was some good pizza. And it they really, would embarrass really the hell out of you if you went in on your birthday. Well, I never went they on my birthday. Brought you a pizza with a candle in it. They <laughs> sang real bad. But then Shakey's are kind of known for that. Let's have yeah, pizza yeah. and sing bad. That, that was the you whole know, thing. Shakey's would Shakey's. make it now. Beat yeah. the heck out of karaoke. <laughs> These were actual people singing with actual music and singing actually badly. But they probably want to get paid package. actually a lot of money, too, to, to go around and do that. Of course, then, if you're an employee at a place like that, it's kind of written into your contract that you will do this. Uh, you Speaking will sing of which, badly. there was, um, what was the, 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 um, the ice cream place that would do that? 
uh, Farrell. Farrell. Never eat the pig trough. Never let never let your best friend get you drunk, take you to Farrell's, nor to the pig trough, and eat the whole thing. There was okay? a, that's least, just a, that's just that's just. I think there were Ferrell's. at least a couple of Farrells around here, but there aren't any more. But oh, they that's would. the one in Cincinnati. Farrells would do the big thing with the uh, the singing to you, the big ice cream thing. And of course, if you if you were like hungry and you needed money, and you didn't have no money, but you were hungry and you were out running around, and you go to Farrells. And you could like, because they never asked for ID or anything. <laughs> you could go in and say, hey, it's my friend's birthday, you know. And then you got your ice cream for free if it was like your birthday. So like they bring over this huge thing of ice cream. It's not like I would actually try this. But you'd get this huge bunch of ice cream for free. And you'd eat it and they'd sing happy birthday. And you'd act like it was your birthday. And you'd act real stupid and then you'd leave. <laughs> okay, well, there Maybe we I'll are. Maybe i around here. <laughs> And then, well, let's see. Okay, so pizza uh, has taken off here. Let's look at another thing. Um, Mexican food. There was originally Taco Bell. And there was one Taco Bell. It seemed like it was out on Hamilton Road there. Once again, it was on Hamilton Road over in Whitehall. And it was like, eh, maybe go to Taco Bell. You know, maybe not. It, wasn't in, it had to be there for a while before he really got in. I mean, because tacos, you'd, you'd get them, you bite into them, they fall apart. What's the point of that? <laughs> then burritos. Well, burritos, that was an interesting idea. You take a bite and it all comes out the other end. No, no, you, you do it right. <laughs> well, you don't bite into the middle of a burrito because then you've got two burritos. I didn't say I've been into one the of middle them, of it. One of them has an opening in it. The other one doesn't. So, yeah, but, but you um, get these new new burrito makers, these, these new, young, inexperienced burrito makers, and you get it, and it's... But so then there was, there was Taco Bell, and they had their own sauce, their own size of burritos and everything, and then... There was Tijuana Taco, and Tijuana Taco had the biggest burritos, and they were great. <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of cheese in there. They, were wonderful. they had a wonderful sauce, and they stayed around for a while. Then they kind of phased out, but after they phased out, there was Zantigo, and Zantigo had each of them beat because they had a better burrito and they had a better sauce, and it was wonderful. And Tijuana Zantigo Taco. did great, <laughs> and then Zantigo kind of. They got bought out by Taco Bell, <laughs> and so Taco Bell just became the the Mexican food, the Taco King, the burrito bandit, and they took over everything. And we miss Carlos Garcia. Well, Garlo, Carlos Garlo Garcia, 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 when it started up, it was short-lived but wonderful. Great, because they had the biggest uh, burritos. Their burrito, their their tortillas, their tortillas were twice as big. Posada. They were twice as big. And they, food used, show. they used two of them because that's what I'm talking about. They used two of them. Is they this all Columbus big, culture, though? That's a lot of them. <laughs> Restaurants, Columbus, food Columbus, a great place to eat, but you wouldn't oh, want hey, to live Columbus. here. <laughs> Tom Petty said it. We're the fast food capital of the Midwest. And, um, but they had these oh, giant God. burritos. They would oh, just use two to tortillas with, and they weighed a pound at least, maybe a couple pounds. And it was good. They were great. But, um, well, and Carlos kind of went and ran into some trouble there, and it kind of phased out. Of course, there was Chi Chi's, but Chi Chi's goes kind of. Ooh, well, it, look up the word, what it means. You know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it just um, I but don't it's know. Fun. <laughs> it's okay, but it, it just never matched, measured up to the fast food, the fast um, Mexican food places. But there we are on that. Gosh. I remember people used to come up here just for Chi Chi's. Yeah? <laughs> oh, that's, that's kind of an inside funny Look at thing. That. <laughs> oh, and there was Big Bite too. Big Bite had Big Bites had were some good. interesting I sandwiches remember some because they bites. had like a it was a a pita thing. It was a pocket bread thing. A pocket pita kind of thing. And then there was another store that had had a multi-grain bun, but they went out of business too. And Big Bite's gone, and all these places are just gone. So. We're gone. <laughs> I guess we have to go too now. <laughs> We've <We'll> be gone. <laughs> See you next time. I'm gonna have to do another one of these. <laughs> so Wilbur can fuss about. I got more to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I'll just have to save that for next time we do one of these. So for us here, well, at least for this portion of Bass Wasteland, I'll see you next time. Adios. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Bass Wasteland.